Reminders before we start in the service this morning, uh, May 8th through the 14th, at the Appalachian Fairgrounds of the Churches of Gods, all together here, we're having an old fashioned tent revival. So if you're interested in that or having one, you'll see the information there in the bulletin. It is nightly, old fashioned tent revival. I don't know if that's rain or shine, but most of them are, I believe. So look forward to that. Also, Ladies' meeting is this Tuesday, correct? Yes. Ladies' meeting is this Tuesday. Men will go out to eat. I think last month we had 16 or 18, if I remember right. We went out the last month at Dino's, so we had a great time there. So, ladies, come on that Tuesday night. Men, if you have nothing else to do, come and join us and eat supper with us. Look forward to that. Also, following up the ladies' meeting there, it's uh, May 14th. So our ladies' conference here, Sid Renfro will be the speaker, very anointed speaker. Ladies, please join us there. You will be in for a treat. I did notice on here it says register today by May 1st. Again, you see the contacts there in the bulletin if you are wanting to attend. They just kind of need a head count of, uh, as far as ladies are. So do not miss that. Uh, a couple other ones here. Also, speaking of the ladies' ministry there, of the ladies' day, uh, we need a couple of men to help volunteer for this, so uh, if you are interested in volunteering for it, please see Benny. Uh, he's also put his phone number there in the board, so please see him if you can help out. Last thing, children's ministry, there's a benefit next week on May 7th. Uh, there's a yard sale down at Elizabeth High School. Um, this uh, children's ministry is reserved a spot. They're going to have some stuff for sale. Please go down, support them. All the proceeds will certainly benefit our children's ministry there. So May first. It's hard to believe it's happening. <laughs> Realizing that this morning there. I had a thought this morning that I had Pat Pierce on my mind this week. That testimony she gave on the altar. To me she's a testimony of persistence. All the things that she's been through. And here she said it Sunday morning, of course you got. Every person in this room has a story. Every person in this room is a, a testament to persistence of faith. Life doesn't prepare us for the punches to the gut or to the slaps to the face we get with one phone call or one moment in life. <laughs> but when I think of faith and when I think of worship this morning, it's a celebration of what God has done. This walk through life is a persistence of faith that is very rough at times, but it's also very rewarding. Joshua 1 and 9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He is behind you, he is beside you, he is up for and ahead of you. He is here right now. Stand with us. If you are able, lift your hand. Heavenly Father, thank you again for your presence. We thank you again that you're in this room with us, Father God. Father, we pray that the sounds of this music and of our voices, Lord, touch us heaven this morning, Father. Father, we pray, Lord, that you're with us no matter what happens to us, Father God. Thank you for putting your steps before us, Father. Father, we pray an anointing on this music this morning, an anointing on the word that Pastor brings us in your name. We pray. Amen. You give the Lord a good hand clap and praise. Take a moment, if you will, and turn around and greet somebody and tell them you're glad they're in the house of the Lord.
audience this morning. The man is here. Let go of anybody else. I want you right now with your nouns to proclaim the battle is here. Somebody say that now. The battle is here. The battle is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Hello, my name is Walt Mullen, and this is my wife, Tammy. We have been serving at the Smoky Mountain Children's Home for almost eight years now, and today we are asking your church to receive a special Mother's Day love offering on Sunday, May 8, 2022, for the children and youth here at the home. To be honest, we need your help now more than ever. Each year we have the opportunity to care for approximately 400 children and youth from the ages of 1 to 17. This includes our residential, foster care, and adoption programs. In addition, we have an on-campus school for grades 7 through 12. Changing lives is our lifelong mission. Will you prayerfully consider helping us transform the lives of these precious children and young people? We simply cannot do what we do without your help. In response to your giving, we are asking that God will bless you and your church abundantly in 2022, according to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. We greatly appreciate your willingness to partner with us. Again, we are asking your church to please remember us on Sunday, May 8th, Mother's Day offering 2022. Let this be your best offering yet. Thank you for caring enough to give. God bless you. Next Sunday is May 8th, and we will be receiving that offering. So I encourage you to think about it, prepare yourself for next week, and I guess most of us here, at least I will speak for myself, was blessed to live in a home with a a mother and a father who brought me up in the Lord. Uh, doesn't happen to all kids. And some of these we will be giving into the kingdom of God so that they can be trained by Christian people. They've come upon difficult situations somehow in their lives that placed them in a difficult situation. So uh, listen to God in your heart. In that regard, I wanted to read a scripture, and you may say it's a little out of context, and that's okay. <laughs> but it is Paul praying for the Ephesians, and they actually quoted part of it uh, in, their, in their video. But listen, it is a prayer for you and me. It's a prayer praying blessings upon you. So I want it to apply to you always, but particularly this next week and next Sunday. So I'm going to read Ephesians 3, beginning with 14. And Paul again is praying for the Ephesians. 
For this cause I bow my knees and to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that's you and me, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, but that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. That's a big statement, isn't it? Amen. He can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. There's power in you. God is just working in you to release that power in various ways. So the last verse says, And to Him be the glory, always, in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. To you, may you be blessed according to this scripture. Heavenly Father, the children's home is a, a wonderful ministry, as you commanded us in James, that we should care and take for uh, orphans and widows. So this is one of those opportunities we have next Sunday to give in this offering. So we uh, give our hearts, our minds, we pray that your spirit would work within us to do the right thing. We're not begging, we're just stating the case. So let your spirit work within the people so that they can discern from you the correct thing to do. We give you our tithes and offering this week also as uh, the ushers receive them into your kingdom that you would receive the glory. Nobody else, only you. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we give. Amen.
can I do it next week? And I said yes. But I teased her probably for weeks and months on the end to get her to play. I really enjoy it when the end plays. Aren't you glad that we have young people that can do things for the glory of God? It's the only way they learn. Church. You know, I know some mornings you probably get up and you wonder, is it important? Is this really an important part of my life? But I can tell you as one who came from a pastor's home and one that watched children around me, it's important. If ball games are important and school is important, church is important. Because it gives kids a foundation of something to look to. And many of you may say, well, you know, I didn't come all the time when I was a kid, but what time I did come... I learned something. I had a foundation. And that foundation is, is that we serve a God who's able. We serve a God that's greater than anything. I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to remember, I know a lot of you ask for songs and we've got them on the list and we're learning them. There are just some songs that when it comes to us, we practice them and we say, we got to wait another week on that. <laughs> But this one came across to us and I wanted to do it this morning. A lot of times we just have the chords. We don't really have music. We have to print it off and kind of learn it from the way they sing it on YouTube or on whatever we listen to. But this song just simply says, if there's mountains in your life, speak to them. Thank you. 
not doing. Have you ever been there? You know, there's things in my house that my boys don't like to do. But sometimes you just got to do it. Right? And when you're walking through something and you need something, there's times you don't want to praise the Lord. But you just need to. Right? You know, sometimes we have to praise God like He's already done. That's what faith is. You have to praise Him like you believe that He's power, that He's stronger, that He is healing, that He's life, that He can break a stronghold. Because if you don't really believe that, probably won't happen. This morning, I have a cousin who turned away from God years ago. She actually told our family, things are going too good for me right now to get back in church. I just don't want that, the troubles, you know, that sometimes come along with work, with walking right. Well, today her son is in the hospital. And she reached out to me and said, will, you, will your church pray for my son? Because she knew when trials come and heartaches come, you turn to Jesus, right? So this morning, I'm going to sing that song for my family. For my family. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. 
No, he said, which way she said, I did the surgery. God did the
is that when she found that was David Parker, that happens to be Jamie and Brad's son, eldest son. And uh, she didn't, I mean, that's just the way the Lord put that together because you know what it's like to buy a used car. But she bought a used car from someone that she knows and trusts and someone who takes very good care of their vehicles. And just uh, God worked that out completely. Now, Sister Ruth already asked, and then Brother Ivan, and then... I someone preach a message that says that if you ever want want to be set free that you have to tell people what's going on and the Lord has impressed me standing over there this morning 
Last week, it's like what Cody said about Sister Pat admitting that she had the bitterness in her heart. I think that was a soul-changing, life-changing moment for her. And for a lot of people. And it got a hold of me too. And just like Cody all week, I've been fighting with that. And you may say, well, I mean, you were an ordained minister. Surely you don't have an issue like that. Yeah, I do. I have had a lot of bitterness in my heart over a lot of different things. There's times I felt that God didn't really care about me. Didn't care about me as a minister. Didn't care about my finances. Didn't care about what my family's going through. I've harbored a lot of bitterness. But you know the Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, I mean, you can't go forward until you unlock that bitterness and release it. Can I tell you, it's hindered my ministry. It's hindered my ministry. It's hindered my relationships with people, my family, people outside. I've been bitter. I've been angry. I've been mad. I can't do that no more, sister. Lee. When God saved me, I didn't have a heart like that. When He called me, I didn't have a heart like that. But the Satan, Satan and his, this world we live in has created that within my soul. And I'm going to tell you, I'm speak, I want to speak to men this morning. God has told me there is a man or men in this place this morning. That you have carried bitterness, you've carried anger, you've carried a lot of things in your life, but because you're a man, you think you're so much better than everybody else. And that you're stronger than everybody else. That you can stand, that that you can stand even if God's not there, you can stand. At this morning, God's impressed me to tell you that you are dead wrong and you have locked up what God wants to set free in you. And you're hindering not only yourself, but you're hindering your spouse, you're hindering your children, you're hindering your walk with God because you have chained up that bitterness to the point that you say, I can do this myself. I don't need anybody else. My friend, I'm going to tell you this morning. There's going to come a time and there's going to come a place that you're going to find yourself in a rock bottom pit. You're going to find yourself like Joseph looking up out of the prison wondering, what am I going to do? My friend, this morning, if you don't get that bitterness unlocked right now, you'll never, ever, ever know what you need to do going forward because God's not going to be there for you because you've locked him out. Brother Jody, I feel this strong in my spirit this morning. I feel like there's somebody, somebody that just needs to come this morning and release that bitterness. Maybe you're not a man, maybe you're a woman, but whatever it is, for you to go forward and for you to do what God wants you to do and for you to be what God wants you to be in this life, it doesn't matter. If you lose your home, if you're homeless, if you don't have no food to eat, you'll still have the one that will take care of you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will feed you. He will clothe you. You don't have nothing to worry about. Because His promises are true forever. Amen. Let it be so. If He says you're His child, you're His child and He's never going to leave you. So this morning, I encourage you. I'm being honest this morning. That's hard to do because I carry one thing with me every day that hinders me, and that's the last name Sanders. Sanders is our stubborn men. Can I give an amen? She said amen finally. She knows we're stubborn men. But if I'm willing to get up here and unlock the chambers of my soul to you this morning and to God, you need to do the same. And experience that deliverance this morning. Amen. Would you come? If, if you need prayer, I'll pray with you. Because I've been there. I know. I invite you to come.
There's no mountain too high, no valley too low. There's no fear that I have. He doesn't already know. There's no problem too big. There's no weapon too strong. There's nothing for God that's impossible.
since I've been at this church for the first time since I have been pastoring period I sat in my office yesterday and wept over a sermon and it's still burning right here and the Lord's let me know that I'm not finished getting it ready yet so now I'm going to have two weeks to get it ready <laughs> so I would probably not wear a watch next week <laughs> <laughs> or I would start the roast a little bit later than normal <laughs> may the Lord bless you May the Lord keep you. May the work that He began in you this morning be completed at the day of Jesus Christ. May you know how much He loves you. May the struggles that you're going to go through this week, you feel an extra presence of His strength Come in and help you and hold you up. May what you feel in here and have experienced in here not stay in here. May the work that God is doing in this church not end. And may the men of this church be set on fire with the power of the Holy Ghost. So strong that you can't sit back and let somebody else praise the Lord for you. May we men be the men that God has called us to be. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You're just me. See a bright light shine. It's just a matter of hope.